In this taxation marking video, we're going to be focusing on enhancing your question practice by showing you how to debrief and mark your own answers. My name is Roderick Black and I'm an ACCA expert tutor and I'm going to guide you through this presentation. It's really important, of course, to practice questions as part of your exam preparation, but it's also really important to appreciate the benefits you'll get from marking your own answers. Then you really see where you're getting the marks and also where you're losing marks. Doing this has been shown to improve students' performance in the actual exam. So let's consider the benefits of marking your own answers. Well, first of all, it helps you measure your progress, both from a technical knowledge and an exam technique point of view. Helps you to focus on writing points and doing calculations that actually count for marks. You'll see from the marking guides that some of the trickier areas are quite chunky in terms of marks. And so you'll start to learn where it might be worth spending a bit more time on those in the exam to get those extra marks. It also lets you see what's not gaining you any marks, so you can avoid wasting time on that kind of material. And just to reiterate, students who self-mark their own answers do do better in the exams. So how do you go about self-marking? Well, you look at the marking guide and you see the breakdown of the marks for the component parts of the answer. And usually it's half a mark or a mark. So quite easy for you to allocate the mark or half mark, whether you got the answer right and to leave it out where you got the answer wrong. If it's more than one mark, then try and break it down into half marks and give yourself credit, half mark by half mark, for the bits you got correct. Don't forget flow through marking. You make a mistake early on in a calculation, you lose something for that. But your later numbers, if they're correct, given your erroneous starting point, you won't be penalised twice over for that one mistake. You'll get the flow through marks, the follow on marks. Do consider jotting down a zero where you got something wrong to highlight to yourself where you went wrong or omitted an answer or whatever. And in a written parts, of the question, if the examiner asks you to explain, then if you make a statement, conclusion let's say, add the word because and finish the sentence, that will get you to explain it. If you've done that, then you can give yourself part of the marks for the statement, the conclusion, and part of the marks for the explanation. But even if you haven't done the follow on because bit, you can always give yourself part of the marks for at least the getting the statement or conclusion correct. Let's get started then. We're going to look at one 15 mark taxation question. It's got both written and computational aspects to it. And we're going to show you how to mark the answer for yourself. We're not aiming in this video to teach you tax technical points. So the actual technical content of the question that we're going to look at is not really important. Rather, we're trying to give you guidance by showing you an example answer on how it might be marked so you can award marks on your own answers. OK, so we're going to go to the ACCA practice platform. OK, we're in the ACCA practice platform now and we're looking at the December 2020 exam. So you can have a go at this for yourself, even if you're not using the practice platform to do your answers, it's really worthwhile still using the marking guides to mark your own answers using the principles that I'll outline in this video. So we're looking at Harbour Limited. It's the last question, questions five and six in the um, exam. I've already pre-populated the answer and we're now in the marking section of the practice platform. I suggest you pause the recording and read the question and then read my pre-populated answer there on the screen. Have a think about marking it for yourself. OK, let's have a look at how we would mark this. Now, this answer is an average answer for this question. Let's see how the marks would be given. So as you can see, it's a corporation tax computation and you can see the marks down the right hand side there. So the first thing is depreciation is added back and that's half a mark. So we got that correct and we can give that. Next thing is amortization of the lease and that was omitted. So I'm going to put a zero in there just to mark that. If we look further down, deduction for lease premium, 
and the working, you can see there was a total of two and a half marks there. That's quite a tricky part of the question. And this student didn't get this at all. So again, I'm going to put in another zero just to indicate things we got wrong. Then we go to the interest payable. And again, the student's answer is not correct, but you can see that they got some of the numbers correct. They got the interest paid on the closing accrual, but they didn't get the opening accrual. So I can't give them the whole mark, but I think it's fair to give them half a mark for that. Now in capital allowances, the working is below. And if we go down to the solution, you'll see those two and a half marks for that. How did we get on? OK, so first off, this student thought no annual investment allowance was possible, and that's wrong. So I can't give him the half mark or the single mark at the top. But he did get the writing down allowance correct. He realised it was special rate pool expenditure. He gave 6%. No, no, he hasn't headed up special rate pool expenditure, which he should have done, but I'm not going to penalise him for that. He got the 6% rate. That tells me he knows it's special rate pool expenditure. And he got the right fraction four months out of 12th because of a short accounting period. So I'm going to give the full mark for that. If we look back up to the computation now, you can see he's brought in the capital allowances of 10,960. What about the property income? Okay, well, if I go back to the marking guide, you can see that there was two marks for this. Again, he got some of the numbers right. Got the rent, 15,600. Got the insurance expense, 1,800. But the fraction is wrong. He's taken four months out of six months for both numerical items. And it should be four sixths for the rent and four twelfths for the insurance. So two marks, I'm going to give him a mark for getting the numbers right. But I can only give him half a mark, I think, for one of the fractions. I'm going to effectively deduct half a mark from the two marks there. Chargeable gain, got that right. So that's an easy half mark. So his taxable total profits figure isn't what the answer's got, but that doesn't matter. When he gets the corporation tax at 19%, this is flow through marking. He's taken 19% of his number, and therefore I'm going to give him half a mark for that. So in total, he got one mark there, two, three, and a half, four and a half marks, and this was 10 marks in total. Four and a half marks out of 10, just under a pass. Okay, let's look at the written part of the question. So now I have to go to this tab here, and I'll bring up the marking guidelines again. Okay, now the first part was worth three marks. Okay, and this was one where you were asked to explain the differences between tax evasion and tax avoidance. Okay, so you can see it's a mark for each component part of this answer. So he did get that tax evasion is illegal, but he didn't explain it, just made a statement. So I can't give the whole mark. I'm going to give half a mark for that. Second point, tax avoidance is legal. He got that right. And he said because, so he's explaining it, it's using tax laws, reliefs, allowances, claims, etc., to minimise your tax bill. Excellent, giving the full mark for that. And then the third point about HMRC's view of extending the accounting period, he said, he said HMRC will be okay with this because it's extending the accounting period is within the law, and so this is not tax evasion. Yeah, that's good enough. I'm giving the mark for that. Full mark. Well done. So in this three mark part, he got two and a half marks, nearly full marks. Second part was to assume the company was not going to have a four month accounting period, but an annual accounting period. The question did suggest that the full annual investment allowance will be available. But this student persisted with the view that you can't get annual investment allowance for special rate pool expenditure. Again, completely wrong. So I can't give him anything for that. So it's a zero to indicate that. 
Then you were told that there would be a capital loss in this 12 month period. And he's got this bit right. You can set the capital loss against the gain because they are both within the same accounting period. Note the word because he explained it. OK, so that's good. And he's calculated it correctly. So full mark there. OK, so in this section, he got one out of two. So he got one there and two and a half in the section above. And on the calculation section, so that's three and a half in total so far. In the calculation section, he got four and a half. So this student got eight out of the 15 marks and therefore just passed this question. How did your marking compare to mine? What did you think they did in the answer that was good and what was not so good? Hopefully you can see it's pretty straightforward, certainly for most of the marks, to know that you're marking it correctly. We've reached the end of this session now. I hope you've picked up some useful tips that will help you when marking and reviewing your own answers. And remember, doing this will enhance your performance in the actual exam. Good luck and thanks for watching.